Hey guys, James here today and welcome to a Sims 4 tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the basics of the terrain tools and uh, some of the changes that they've made to foundation and then the way rooms work in relation to the terrain tools. So this is obviously a big free new update that just came out uh, and it's, it's a little bit complicated when you look at it at first. So this is where you find it, the little terrain tools icon. And then we got this little shovel icon that is the terrain manipulation. And then you have your selection of tools here. So you got your raised terrain, you got the lower terrain, like all this stuff is pretty basic, smooth. Uh, it, it, like it tells you exactly what it does. And then we've got flattened terrain. So this will flatten wherever I click. Or we have this one here that's called flattened to height. Uh, so this one is, is interesting. I'll show you how it works first and then tell you how to use it. So that little box there, we set the height that we want that and the terrain will always go to that height no matter where we are on the lot. So this can actually be really useful if you want two separate pieces that are going to be the same height, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then lastly, we have flatten lot, which will take everything back to square one, which actually, interestingly enough, you'll find and you'll notice this around the lot uh, around the world now, this lot's actually not flat. And a way you can tell if a lot is flat or not is if you use a flatten tool, uh, if it's perfectly flat, you'll see grid squares in, uh, in, in here. If you don't, it's not actually flat. So surprisingly, this lot is not flat. Anyway, now it is. So in addition to those basic tools, we obviously have, you know, the size of the brush, which is pretty standard. So obviously if you want to move a huge area, you've got to move a small area. And then if you want to, if you want to move squares or a large square, uh, you can do that. Uh, so that, that that's all kind of straightforward. I'm sure you can figure that out yourself. Uh, but some more stuff to get uh, like more uh, power user level of control. Uh, so if you want to, so at the moment, uh, well, these sliders here. So this one here is how harsh the tool will be. So if we make it really soft, when we click down, you can see it's a much more sort of smooth slope into the center of the tool. Whereas if we do it much more harsh, you can see that the edge is pretty much just going up as steep as it can do. So that sort of toggles between those two there. The bottom slider here is going to be for uh, the speed at which it moves. So if you do a really soft and really slow speed, you can see you get this really nice gentle just, just hill that just sort of pokes up a little bit and like that. So then obviously combining these two tools together, you could adjust the speed, make it really fast but real and really harsh and then you just go whoop. <laughs> and and so that's how you sort of adjust, you know, if you want to do really fine, really smooth adjustments, you can do that and get it moving really really slow if you want it just right. Uh so that's that. Now, uh something that you might be wondering how to do. And this is something I wanted and uh this is the smallest brush that we have available, uh, which is still pretty big. Like it's taken up, if you have a look at it, what, like a diameter of four squares almost, like four and a half squares, which is pretty big. If you hold down shift on the keyboard and scroll the mouse wheel, it actually changes the size of your brush. And you can actually go down smaller than the smallest size of brush. So you can actually go all the way down to like a point, basically, and just do a single point between tiles like that. Uh, so that's really cool. So that's how you can adjust that. There's no indication of that happening here. So that's with uh, shift on the, the keyboard and then using the scroll wheel to move the size of this. Uh, likewise, if you hold down alt on the keyboard, this will adjust. You can see down the bottom, it's adjusting the speed at which your brush moves. So it's now slow. If I hold down alt and scroll, it's now fast. So that's just a quicker way rather than moving your mouse down and clicking and dragging. Uh, likewise, if you hold down control, that will adjust the harshness and softness of your brush. So you can see that's nice and soft. If we control and then make it more harsh, it does that. So control, alt and shift are how you control this brush and the tools and how it works while it's in your hand. This is obviously a lot of stuff to sort of take in, but I also do want to point out if you actually press escape and go here to lessons, this actually has a whole section on terrain manipulation in here, and it does give you a lot of the hotkeys that you can use. So if you've ever forgotten which does what or how to do something, this, these lessons are actually super useful to be able to figure it all out. So those are in there too. Uh, now, so you've got those. That's just basically how you use the controls at this point. Uh, you can also see when I hold down control, uh, the, the little arrow in the middle is flipping up and down. So that means if I'm using the raise tool, uh, normally it'll just do that. If I just want to quickly go down rather than having to go click on the down tool, you can just hold control and then it will go down. Likewise, the other way around with the down tool, if you hold control, it'll go up. So you don't even really need the two tools, but they're there and you can just hold control to toggle it. Now, one of the more interesting tools that we were talking about earlier was the flatten to height tool that has this little box in the middle. And you'll see that this little uh, scroll bar sort of becomes available when you click on it. And that actually moves where that little uh, little box goes. So this will, you can set it all the way up. That is going to be, I believe, 
the highest height it's going to go up to there. So hang on, we need to go faster, faster, harsher, go. So that is, I think, the maximum height on the lot, actually. Yeah. So it goes from maximum height all the way down to minimum height. So you just sort of select and move that. Now, obviously, it's not exactly um, easy to fine-tune heights on this slider because if it's the whole height, maximum height, maximum depth, it's pretty hard to do. If you hold down, and this is another keyboard combination, it is also in the lessons again, so if you forget this, it's in there. If you hold down control and then the square bracket, you can see you can like sort of fine-tune it like that and uh, move it up and down. So you can select the exact height that you want to get, click there, and it will go to that height. And then likewise, you can sort of lower it down, do it there. And then that's how you can sort of quickly adjust stuff through there. So that's a really basic look at uh, the sort of the way the terrain tools work. Now I want to talk about uh, the rooms and what's happened with these. Uh, so they've actually changed the entire way that uh, foundations work in the game. So before you used to click on this button here and there used to be a slider on the side here that would adjust our foundation height. That's no longer the case. If you're looking for it, you click on a room and it's now this little gizmo here in the middle. So you can see it's obviously up or down. So you can pull the room up and you'll notice that the other room stays on the ground, which is really, really cool. So it means we can have different foundation heights on the same level, which was never possible before. So we can easily just drag that up and down. Uh, and then you go. you can go pretty high up. Uh, I think to the maximum terrain height is how high it can go. So that's as high as terrain can go, and that's how high that can go. Likewise, you can just drag it straight on down. And if you drag it down, it will actually just push the terrain out of the way for you, and it will just go straight down there. Now, so something to note about these, uh, the way this works, you cannot join... So these two rooms are on the same level. They're both on the ground floor. Uh, you cannot join these two rooms together like this. It doesn't work. They have said that that's something that they want to look into and actually make possible in the future, but at the moment, no. So at the moment, they have to be separate like this. Uh, so that's something to note. And another important thing to note is when you are doing fences, if you were, say, let's say this was a, a garage, you know, for your house and this was your house on foundation. If you're doing like a fence to build between the two, for example, uh, so like this, You'll note that it'll be, oh, you can't do it because it's got conflicting block clusters, which basically just means the two blocks are at different heights. Uh, a block is basically a collection of rooms. Uh, so this is a room. And then, for example, this here is, is a block because there's two rooms in one block. And what that means is if I move this up, it all moves together. So that is, that's what it means when it says a uh, block. Uh, so yeah, anyway, if we go back here, we can't drag a fence between the two, but, and we can't do it the other way either. But if you drag it from the ground so it's not attached to either block, like this, and then you actually can. And the reason that that works is because if you start dragging off of uh, a room, it will sort of... You can see how it extends the room's height the, up to the, through the foundation. The same thing is happening here, but you can't see it. Uh, but you would be able to see it if we move this up like that. It will move up with it. Uh, so that's what's happening. So if you want to just build a, a fence on the ground, which of course you can do at any time between like two walls, you just do it like this. And if you wanted to do it, say for example, you had two rooms, only one tile apart, and you'll note that you actually can't do it because it's two different heights. If you just build a fence here and then move it in the middle, then you can do it that way. So that's just a handy little hint. If you're trying to do fences between two different heights, uh, that's how you can do it now. So that's that. Uh, there's also... Uh, a bunch of stuff, but like way more stuff you can do with rooms. And there's honestly so many tutorials that I'm going to be able to do and show you guys. So for example, if I build this room here, you'll see that we can't actually go directly above it yet because it's not high enough up. So you need the height essentially for one sim to fit underneath and you'll find it by just, you know, trial and error. So we'll find it here somewhere. If we go a little bit, if we go up higher and then bring it down, I think it'll probably be a better way to do it. So if we go up... Uh, uh, conflicting block clusters. I don't actually know why that's... That shouldn't be conflicting. Uh, well, that should work. I don't know why it's not. Anyway, um, <laughs> that, uh, that, that seems like a bug. But you can do that normally. Uh, that should work fine. What if I, what if I build under it? See, I can build under it. I don't know. Maybe that one was just... Oh, no. I don't know. That worked before. I don't know why it's not working now. Anyway, well, ignore what I said there. That should usually work. Anyway, so as you can see, also moving this whole block cluster, all the foundation moves with it. Now, when it comes to terrain, if you're looking to do something that's like a bridge, uh, which you can do, it's just a little bit fiddly. And I'll show you how how that works as well. So just again, another entry level sort of thing. So if you're building, you want to build a bridge over here, you're going to do this. The game is actually just going to put foundation directly underneath the room because any room on the ground floor is always, always going to have foundation. It never doesn't have foundation. So 
what that means is we actually need to build a room on the second level. So we're going to build a second story. We're going to delete the lower level. Then the cool thing is, this is now floating. If we just bring this down and sit it on top of that. Uh, actually went down a little too low, so I'll bring it up one more. Sit it on top of that. We now have a bridge that looks like it's sitting on both sides. And that will work just fine. I could have just easily built this out of uh, just a floor tile as well. I didn't have to use a room. But that now works. Now, to be able to, for your sims to be able to access this though, you're going to have to do... Uh, stairs because they, they can't get up that because it's technically on the second level. So you just go ahead and put some stairs on that. Uh, oh, that's strange. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. There we go. Put some stairs on that like that and you do the same on the other side as well. Uh, just like that. So now they'd actually be able to walk across that. Although we can't get up here yet. So if we did some stairs here as well, then they'd be able to get up there. So now they could walk up these stairs and walk across that bridge and then that will function as a bridge. Obviously you can use this for way more than just doing a bridge. But that, again, is just another little thing that you can do. Something else really cool to note about this whole thing is that, so while we have uh, the, ter uh, the terrain here, and if we did all this cool stuff with the ter terrain, and we wanted it to, to like uh, be a cool lot that was really rocky and all that, and then I decided I wanted to build a room, I don't know, from here, and I did this, and I was like, oh no, it, it, I flattened all my terrain, because that's what it does. A room will always push the terrain out of the way. Uh, the cool thing about this is you can actually move the room around, so I could do this, it will sort of cut that away. But if I'm like, oh, I don't want it there anymore, and I move it over this way, the terrain is actually still there, it hasn't changed. It's just sort of cut away while the room is there. So I think that's a really cool feature, that we didn't, we've never had that before, so uh, placing a room down doesn't, like, erase what you've done to the terrain, it's like really flexible in that way. Uh, so that's a really cool thing to also note. So, but that does mean we can't have walls that sort of uh, blend into the terrain at all. Like, that's just not in the game. I'm hoping they add it. It'd be really cool. So what I mean by that is, in previous games, via cheats, we've been able to build a room that will then blend into this hillside. But you can see it sort of cuts it away straight down the side like that. Now, there are ways around this. Uh, so roofing uh, units will actually go into terrain. So we can drag this straight into the hillside. And that will actually go in. So what you could end up doing, and this is something that I'm totally going to do, is you could build a little hobbit hole entrance like this. So because this is a wall, we can actually add doors to that. And what that means is if we do this, we had our entrance just here. And then we were to put a big door on the front. Let's go for, I don't know, this glass door. It's not in the center, but whatever. So that can go in here. Then inside here, you'd be able to do an entrance to a house. So if you did like a basement or something right here. So if you go for a basement, then you could do stairs down. So you could put stairs there, let's say. And then obviously this is not very good, but that's basically how you would do it. So then it blends into the terrain that way. Uh, and you could use like, I don't know, a different wall or something. It even look like a bunker or something like that. So that's the way you could do it. Um, now something, uh, another update with stairs that they've made. Again, this sort of goes hand in hand with uh, the terrain and the build mode and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to build like a little section here. So previously with stairs, they would always place upward like this, you can see. So they're always going to go up and you can never place... So if I was on this floor trying to find where stairs go down, I could never do it. Now, if you hold down control, the stairs will sort of pop down to the... Like they'll start going down. So that's how I was able to get the stairs to go down to the basement as well uh, in this section by holding control. So that's a new update. But that, I think, is probably going to cover... Like this is like beginner look into terrain. Like this is... All the simple stuff. It, it Like, I know it's a lot to take in. I'm sure it's probably a little uh, overwhelming as well, just because it's a lot of keyboard shortcuts, a lot of, like, controls and all that. Uh, but uh, that's just the entry level of it. So you can just do really simple... Like, that's the cool thing, though. I think that that's what's really cool about it. You can be really simple about terrain. Uh, so I can just do this, smooth it all out, and then it's just a hill. And then it's really easy uh, for anyone just to build on top of this. In previous games, it was a bit of a nightmare... If you didn't really know what you're doing to build on terrain, but now it's like I just want a house here. I just place it there. It's already got all the the foundation for me, and then I can just get stairs in. I just do this, and then I've got stairs right there, and then I've already got a house that's on a hill. So it's really easy in that way. Another little update they've made it to uh, a little bit easier is I think. Um, do I, did I get? Oh no, it's still there. So you can click through the terrain to where the basement is. I don't think it seems to be working right now. I think actually it needs to be. If I put it here. Oh, whoops. Hang on. I put it here. Uh, yeah, so I can click on that. I think it was because it was too far underground over there. Uh, so you can actually click on basements through the terrain now. You used to have to go down a level then click on it. But now it's like, I know it's there. I can clearly see it. So you click on that and then you can just, you know, 
access it that way. But yeah, that is a look at the new update, the terrain tools, a quick tutorial and overview, and a quick tutorial on sort of rooms and block clusters and how they work. Uh, if you guys want to see more detailed tutorials and, and like a little bit more in depth with all this stuff, I'm happy to do it. So just let me know. But that's what we've got for today. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it a little bit helpful. If you didn't even know terrain tools are in the game, they are now. So update your game and have fun with it. Uh, I'm going to flatten a lot. There you go. So if you flatten the lot, that room will stay there with stairs as well. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. And have an awesome day.